Hey, so I am going to talk to you guys today about makeup. So I'm a noob, right? So don't judge my choices or ability to understand all that is makeup. I have watched many, many videos from like Molly Burke, Lucy Edwards, Fashionista, all these people, super amazing, totally blind or mostly blind and can like do their makeup like a pro. I am not that girl, but I, I'll learn eventually. Maybe I'll do a video of, you know, me practicing and you guys can watch me learn from day one. But as of right now, mostly my mom and sisters help me do my makeup, especially the eye makeup. Um, I can put on foundation, I can put on lipstick, that stuff is pretty easy. It's the stuff that takes like a, a more steady hand and very like precise movements and um, placement of stuff that's a little bit tricky for me still. But what I have here is a bag of makeup that I purchased for myself. Um, my sisters and I were recently in an opera production and we had to do a lot of our own stage makeup and stuff and instead of always taking my sister's makeup and, you know, running out, you know, of makeup because we used all hers, I decided I should have some of my own. One, so that we don't have to share brushes or stuff like that, but also so that they can get to use some of my stuff as well if they, you know, don't have something one day or we used all of one of theirs, you know, eyeshadow or whatever. So, but what happened was I had to door dash some makeup because one, I don't drive, you know, being blind and everything. And our work schedules were so busy that we didn't have time to pick up some specific colored um, eyeshadow that we needed for our characters and so I door dashed and I you know I don't really know brands that well I know some of the more like popular covergirl Revlon that kind of stuff for beauty products but I was just looking for a a good price especially because we weren't going to be wearing it for that long and it was just kind of for um, stage makeup kind of stuff so um, I wasn't really looking for anything specific. I got my stuff at Big Lots, so limited choice, but it was pretty good pricing as far as, you know, whatever I saw on the other stores. And to make sure that I had a place to carry it all, I, was, I also bought one of their makeup pouches, which the only two options I had were this Lucky Charms one and another one that had, like, the Cheetos logo on it. Um, but I'm not mad because, you know, being blind, um, if I put something down and then maybe I don't remember where I put it or it falls and I don't notice, I can just very easily ask somebody to help me find the makeup pouch that's got Lucky Charms on it, you know? That's kind of a good method for most things. Like if you have personal items that other people also have and you're in a big group or somewhere where you might put your stuff down and need to pick it up again and don't remember where it was or it fell. Um, you know, phone cases, makeup pouches, backpacks, purses. Make sure you either put some kind of like keychain on it that's very unique and identifiable or make sure that it's got like a pattern on it that that's pretty easy to see. So here we have my Lucky Charms makeup pouch. What I want to show you though is how I have started labeling my stuff. Before I show you what I have in there though, which there's quite a bit, I'm going to show you my very favorite labeling tools. Here is my braille label maker and basically it's got um, not every braille symbol, but most of the popular ones, definitely the alphabet and some of the indicators for like capitalization and punctuation and stuff like that are on here and it's I've got clear label tape right now inside here so I would just like punch the label out and you know once I have all the letters on there the word that I want 
I cut it. It's got like a little cutting setting on this wheel somewhere and it would just be a clear piece of braille label. And really what I would use this for, um, probably to label the type of makeup that I have, but also um, the different colors, especially for the eyeshadow palette. Um, I haven't done that yet. I'm going to show you what I did do. But I do plan to use this braille label maker to add some labels to my makeup. But this guy is the one that I used to label what type of makeup I have right now because I do still have some usable vision and I've shown this um, type of labeling in other videos that I have but um, what I've done with this brother little um, kind of print label maker that people mostly use for files and stuff like that I've used him to make some extra bold large print labels for my type of makeup that I have just because although I can identify most of the pieces I have right now because like I said I'm a noob so I don't really have that much I only have one of everything I can kind of de you know determine what it is by the shape that it is but eventually when I have more than one lip gloss or more than one um, item that might be the same size and shape as another type of item I will you know benefit from the labels that I put on there. So let's start here with this guy. This is the eyeshadow that I got. Um, I got it because it's got lots of vibrant colors on it which is really good for like stage makeup kind of stuff um, and for fun too. We used mostly like the darker colors for our characters this time. This one actually had very large print on it but the reason I still chose to put a label on it is because now I know all my labels are going to be the same type of font and bold print. And so when I want to quickly figure out what this stuff is, I will look for something that looks like this on it. And I can, you know, then see what it is. And it says eyeshadow. So eventually, like I said, I'm going to make braille labels and I'm probably going to put them, um going like vertically so I'm showing you how it is right now it, this little palette of eyeshadow is longer from side to side than it is from top to bottom um, and it's got 12 different shades on here I think it, it's also mixed between like shiny and matte um, so like six on top and six on bottom two rows meaning each little uh, compartment where the shadow is is kind of narrow from side to side. The label would probably fit best if I turned this and then put the labels um, kind of perpendicular to the other label that I have across that says eyeshadow. And what I'll probably do is just kind of like a general um, indication of what color it is. I might not write out the whole color like you know yellow is very long it's a very long word. I don't even know if I have yellow on here. You guys know I'm colorblind. <laughs> um, but I would probably put YLW or something like that so that I would know that that's the yellow eyeshadow, like in what position it is in the rows. Um, and I would probably, to be able to find it, um, just kind of run my finger along the edge, not really sticking my finger into the eyeshadow, but just very barely touching the edge on the inside to kind of feel where the divisions are. And, you know, I would say, like, let's pretend that I said yellow, and let's pretend that the yellow one is the second one from the top. You know, I would remind myself where it is by feeling and figuring out, okay, yellow is in the first row, second one. So I would open this up and kind of run my finger along the top, find that first division between the first and second eyeshadow, and then that's where I would be able to put my brush in. Um, if there's enough light though as well I would probably be able to kind of see where the different eyeshadows are as well. I like how this one's kind of set up um, more for my organizational mind that it's not all over the place like some eyeshadows. They have similar colors um, next to each other and so I kind of like that. 
All right, that's my eyeshadow. What else do I have here? This guy, I already know it's my lip gloss because of the shape of it. Um, but also the label that I put on there that says gloss, right? Um, what I probably will do is put the braille label on here that says gloss and I can probably put it right over the top of that one depending on if it obscures the print for me or not because it is a clear label but the braille bumps might um, make it a little harder for me to see the letters underneath maybe. I could always just put it right next to it. Um, but what I'll do on the other side where there is no print and I'll explain why in a second um, I would put the color that this is so that eventually when I get some more lip gloss um, I can also be able to tell the difference between the colors that they are because again I'm colorblind um, unless they're like an extremely high contrasting like different you know two different shades of lip gloss I probably won't be able to tell what color it is that well um, but here's why I didn't put the label on top of like or I made sure not to put the label on top of where there were um, printed words and so even on the back where the sticker for the barcode is because a lot of times there's important information um, not just for me but for somebody who's sighted that you know is important to read like the color that it is or the brand or whatever um, there's also something up here at the top. I think it's like the number that this company gave this color lip gloss. Um, I try not to cover that stuff because even though I might have my labels on here to tell me what kind it is or what color it is, if somebody else is looking at this for me, maybe either I ran out and they need to see what color it is or, you know, they can't read braille <laughs> and they want to see what color it is or what brand it is they can you know still get to read the print part so that's my lip gloss just, just put them up there next to the eyeshadow so this guy is my mascara I believe yes mascara and this is the voluminous mascara um, I can still kind of read those letters especially because when I shine the light on them it um, becomes more high contrast against the the background of this um, like packaging that they've got on here but this is the mascara um, I still haven't quite learned how to do mascara by myself I am so scared of poking my eye and I know there's like the trick where you can put your finger on the tip of the brush and then like keep your finger kind of on the you know the inside of your eye um like touching your nose so that you know where the brush is going and um you know all that kind of stuff i don't know i haven't tried we can see together in another video but mostly what i do now is have somebody hold the brush by my eye and then tell me when to blink and so they'll position it where it goes and then tell me to blink and then my blinking will apply the mascara to my eyelashes and that's my favorite way of doing it. I don't like it when somebody starts like brushing it up and down on my eyelashes um, or moving a lot when when we're putting it on. Um, I have nystagmus so my eyes move a lot and um, making my eyelid move a little bit too. and. You know, if somebody comes really close and then I like wiggle my eyes a little bit, you know, my cornea touches the, the tip of the thing or, um, you know, they're trying to avoid touching my eye and then they move the brush and then poke my eye instead and it's, you know, things happen. But this is my mascara. I'm probably, I mean, I mostly ever buy black mascara so I, I'm not going to put the color on here. Um, if I ever get another mascara, like one that's for like extra volume or another one that's like waterproof or something like that, I'll probably put an indication on there to help me tell the difference. I'm going to put him up there with my lip gloss. Alright, this guy here. 
Um, this is a, a special thing. I actually used to own a mascara that was like this, where one end was actually the the eyelash clear gel stuff to kind of get your eyelashes in the right shape first and then apply the mascara. Um, I might still have that at home somewhere. But I didn't have that kind of makeup, you know, little pouch with me. So I bought this and this one is actually brow gel and um, eyelash gel together. I might label the other side so that I can tell which side is which, but you know, over labeling is visually complex as well. And I might just keep it this way too, because now I know the side that has a label that I can read that says brow gel is for the brow gel. And the other side is the eyelash gel. I also have here eyeliner by the same company, ELF, E-L-F, I don't know how people want to say that because I'm a noob, like I said. I really like how this has like a nice slender, like it's a tapered kind of brush handle, kind of like how your other makeup brushes might be, just more comfortable, more ergonomic to hold, not this big like chunky barrel thing. Um, I haven't used this by myself yet, so I don't know how it paints on, you know? I don't know how it feels to do it by myself, but it is a liquid eyeliner. Um, it doesn't feel like there's that much in here. I didn't realize like how small of a quantity of eyeliner you get from something like this. Um, but it's got a nice long handle. I will probably put the braille label on here too, even though, like I said, I can kind of tell what things are because of the shape that they are. Like, I don't have anything else that feels like this shape, but in case I get something else, like, for some reason, a, another kind of tool that feels like this, I will make sure to, to label it accordingly. Um, but yeah, this is black eyeliner as well. I don't really think I'm going to get any other color eyeliner, so I'm not going to indicate what color it is on here. What else do I have? Okay, so <laughs> this is liquid foundation. I got it because I thought maybe it would be easier for me to put it on than a powdered one because I can feel it on my skin better. Um, you know, the, the temperature of it and the feeling of like the sensation of the wet foundation on my face is easier to detect than like a powdered one to make sure that I got everything on evenly and everywhere. The only problem is the color foundation that I requested was not available. So they got me one that was like the closest color to it. And I mean, you guys tell me, this is some kind of honey color. I used an AI online like foundation finder to tell me what color my skin was because, again, colorblind. Um, but I don't think that's my color. I think it's a little darker, actually. So I'm probably not going to get to use this until summertime when hopefully I tan a little more. But yes, this is foundation. I am probably going to label the color on here. Okay, let's see what else I have in here. Okay, so here's the blush, and I know it's the blush because it's the only circular little, like, palette compact thing that I've got in there. Um, and like I said, if I ever get more blush like this, I'll probably label the colors on it too. But I know that this one's kind of like a rosy color, lighter color. Um, I don't know. I I googled what colors look best with my skin tone and it gave me colors like similar to this. So I'm not sure if it was right or not. So here's a, a tip. If you are blind and you're trying to figure out your makeup, a lot can be found on the internet, especially with um, finding colors and that kind of stuff and figuring out what your skin tone is. Um, but 
nothing is better than having a real person with you to kind of tell you that kind of stuff. So here is something else that I got because we were doing a lot of stage makeup and needed more definition in our face and that kind of thing. I got this contour palette. Um, it's got like the darker shades and then also like a highlighter shade on there. Um, there are four. I know that the darkest color is down here in the bottom right corner and that the lightest color I believe is in the top left corner and it goes from left to right, top to bottom, kind of like in reading order, like from lightest to darkest. And that's how I would kind of find out what shade I'm using, especially, you know, taking a look at which way this opens, knowing which way is the top and the bottom by where the label is and that kind of stuff. Um, but if I really wanted to figure out like the exact color and if I needed to know because of certain things I wanted to do with it, I would probably like the eyeshadow kind of label in the general area where the eye, um, the powder is what color it is so that I would figure out on the quadrant itself once I open this up kind of where the different shades are. So I'm gonna actually I'm gonna scoot you up that way. What else do I have in here? So whatever, oh yeah, what I have left here is just my lip balm and it is not labeled because it's the only thing that I have that is this shape. Lip balm is usually like this, with the little twisty thing on the bottom, the cap, whether it's like Chapstick brand or Burt's Bees brand, um, unless it's like an Eos egg, which even still, that's a very unique shape. So I always know that this is my lip balm, unless I was some kind of like brass instrument player and needed um, like cork oil or whatever that's called. What's it called, guys? Valve oil. Um, or a string player. I think my sister had something like where she would kind of lubricate her bow with that kind of look like this. Um, I would not have that in my makeup bag per se, but in case something happened, everything spilled out of my band bag and my makeup bag and got mixed together, then I would probably label this so that I would know that this is my lip balm and not some kind of oil for instruments. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is, I don't have a label on here for that reason. Um, and those usually don't come with color unless, unless I got one that had like tinting in it, then I would probably label that. Um, here is the set of makeup brushes and sponge that I have. Let me pull them out of the bag for you so you can see them a little better. Here's the sponge. I still haven't really learned how to use these very well, hence you can see there's no makeup stains on there, but um, in this one I just feel the shape of it depending on what I need to do with it. I can figure out if I need the very flat end or just like this one angled end here or the round part. Do you use the round part? I'm not sure. So there's the sponge that came in that set. Um, this is just the very basic like Daily Essentials kind of five piece set. Here's the big, I guess like foundation brush. Um, guys, remember, I am a newbie, so I don't really know, but this one's huge and you know, foundation covers a large part of your face. So that's what I'm assuming this is for. It came with um, another, like a medium-ish brush. This one I'm gonna guess is for like blushes maybe, maybe like the contouring stuff, like the dark one that covers more area. Um, so there's that and if you can see I do not have labels on these brushes because they are all very unique shapes and sizes. Here are the last two. One of them's a little thicker than the other one. These are both very like small detail brushes. This one's probably for covering your whole um, eyelid with color, like eyeshadow, um, or maybe for like the highlighter stuff for contouring. This is my 
uneducated guess. And then the smaller, thinner one, probably for doing more detailed stuff with your eyeshadow or highlighters or things like that that just need a tiny little surface area to be covered. Um, but yeah, this is everything that I had in my makeup bag so far. Um, the more things we do, like performances and things like that, the more types of makeup we might need. But I feel like that's the basics and pretty much everything I'm going to need for now. Um, and every kind of label that I'm going to need on it, except for the braille labels that I told you I'm going to do with like the colors and also what type of stuff it is in case I'm somewhere dark or I can't read the print labels. But yeah, if you are interested, I am thinking of doing a video where I learn how to put the makeup on by myself um, just for fun so you can see me end up looking crazy at the end. Um, and then maybe I'll do one where one of my sisters is kind of observing me and giving me tips so we'll see. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.